So let's start with the widgets. As you can see for the Android app, you have the larger widget and the smaller widget. Both actually function similarly with the exception that the larger widget actually has the remote uh, on and off button for the um, air conditioning and the remote lock and unlock for the car. Uh, otherwise, just show the remaining mileage as well as um, how much charge is left. But just bear in mind the charge and the mileage, it's not proactively updated so you need to kind of hit refresh to get an update which makes a lot of sense okay so let's get in the app um, as you can see the app shows you know the nice view of the car you can't actually change the color of the car unfortunately um, but as you can see the first line there shows uh, my doors are closed but not locked because I'm actually sitting in it um, we can try locking it afterwards but for now I'll leave it as that uh, you can also see that I'm actually connected via Bluetooth because obviously I'm in the proximity of the car. Uh, it gets connected via Bluetooth, which is a lot more stable for me to show you the demo. But if you're outside, it does connect over 4G, so that's not a problem. And later in this video, I will also share with you how the app actually connects to the server, which is quite interesting. I found it, uh, I always thought that it was connected differently and connected to China. Obviously it is, it is not, depending on where you are. And I actually did a bit of digging and I've got some information for you. So yeah, let's continue. Um, as and when it's connected via Bluetooth, you can also see the Bluetooth icon come up. So the first line of icons there, you will see uh, lock and unlock, which is pretty self-explanatory. And then you have the uh, light and the, um, the little car with a beeping icon. So those two is for alerting to, to kind of help you out when you're in the parking lot trying to look, locate your car. So the light will kind of blink the hazard light for 15 times if I'm not mistaken. And the little honk will get your car on the hazard for 5 times as well as the uh, honk. Okay, we can try it out. Um, let's see this. Oh, every time you kind of trigger a command to the car, it actually prompts you for a password. Okay, so in this case, I'll punch it in. So yep, it goes on for 15 times, right? I won't do the honk. Um, it's pretty much the same thing with honking. Uh, I didn't want to kind of alert my neighbors, but let's go down the list. Because I'm actually sitting in the car, the air, con air conditioning is turned on. So if I go in there, you can kind of set the temperature uh, as to how, how cool or how warm you want it to be. Um, I'm likely going to use heat in Singapore. So you can also set the schedule uh, as to when you actually want it to turn on. Uh, this is a bit of an extra feature. I don't actually think we use this a whole lot in Singapore. Um, more settings. Oh, you, this is quite interesting. You can actually set um, how long you want air, con air conditioning to turn on for. So for example, you want to cool down the car in a very hot day, you can set it for maybe 15 to 20 minutes before you get in. Uh, and after 15, 20 minutes, it cuts off. And uh, obviously the circulation mode, you want it internally circulated or externally circulated as well. Okay, I will leave that as default and I'll go out. Okay, let's go to doors and windows. Uh, obviously, I'm in the car and the doors are unlocked. So it's showing uh, doors closed but not locked. Um, I can actually go to the front and lock the doors if I want to. But for now, I'll just leave it as it is. And assuming everything's good, you can see the red will go away and it just turns all green. The only thing you can kind of close remotely is actually the windows. So you can't actually close the trunk remotely, unfortunately. So assuming somebody's opened the trunk accidentally or it's unlocked, you can't actually close it, but only the windows, right? So going out, uh, we go to digital keys. Some of you may know that um, the BYDs do get issue with RFID, um, the little card thing that you can tap on the side mirror. But alternatively, I've actually made um, my phone as one of those digital keys that I can kind of tap my phone via NFC. I've also, as you can see here, I've got two keys. It's actually unlimited keys if I'm not mistaken. I've always shared one with my wife on her iPhone. So I've actually mentioned in videos before that it works pretty well between uh, Android and also iOS. So no dramas there. Um, so that's the digital key. So going back out, um, we look at seats. This is to turn on the, heat, the uh, seat ventilation, as you can tell. The front two are the only ones that are possible to do it. So if I turn on seat ventilation on the passenger, it's turned on. You tap it another time, it reduces the speed by one. 
and you can obviously turn it off. Okay, going back. Um, next is tire pressure. So from here, you can actually see all tire pressure on all four uh, tires. Pretty straightforward. And uh, services. So this is actually uh, showing you the service centers in your particular region. So as you can tell in Singapore, we have three service centers. You can actually obviously change the country. Um, Malaysia, Philippines, Thailand, Hong Kong. So here is where I want to kind of double click into why only these few countries are actually available. So as you know, the app actually needs to connect somewhere uh, or a BYD server somewhere before it connects to your car. So for the most part, we all think that, you know, the server probably sits somewhere in China and there's some concerns, blah, blah, blah. But I've actually done a bit of a research. I've actually tracked some packets going out from the phone, going to whatever the BYD app is. And I've noticed that it actually goes to a data center within Singapore, which is actually great news. So it goes to uh, Ali Cloud or Alibaba Cloud data center in Singapore, which is hosted by BYD. And why there is this few countries is because you would think that they will have a server for Philippines, Malaysia, Hong Kong, Thailand, but unfortunately they don't. So all these countries here actually connects back to the server that is actually in Singapore. And that's actually my guess. And I did a bit of research and digging some more for other countries, which I will show you. The servers on other countries, let's for example, say uh, Europe and uh, Mexico, Brazil, and also Australia, they have their respective servers. So for example, Australia have the servers in Sydney, and I believe the whole of Australia connects to that, including New Zealand, and whole of Europe actually connects to France, right? Uh, I've actually tried to kind of look up Malaysia, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Philippines, and Thailand, and they don't actually have a server. In some sense, it's actually good news for us because the closer the proximity, the less delay and lag there is to the entire process. So yeah, it's actually a good thing. Coming back, there is vehicle positioning. So this one, it's a bit of a GPS tracker. So what it does is that it looks up the position of your car, um, nearest position rather. And then if you want to, you can obviously honk it and trigger the lights, or you can actually navigate to it. Uh, you can then turn on Google or ways to navigate to your car in case you know, you're know you in a really large car park and you can't really find it. Uh, understandably, you need to have GPS uh, connectivity. Let's go to more functions. Why this feature exists is a bit of an interesting one. So if you come back here, you can actually hold and move things around, right? So if I kind of want to drag this and move it up like that, I could. Alternatively, if I actually don't want something, let's say I want to hide services and I want to hide vehicle positioning, it becomes a cleaner interface and then more functions kind of store the rest of the unused icons. I see this as an upside, potentially in the future, they might add some additional capabilities. But yeah, who knows? But for now, this is one of those use cases. And let's go into my account and have a quick look of some of the settings. Account and security is pretty straightforward. Uh, some of you may know, uh, BYD owners, that the account is actually tied to the email address that you actually register when you purchase the car. So it's very important to get that right. I kind of dislike the fact that it's connected via an email uh, during the purchase of the car. But yeah, it is what it is. Obviously, you can change the login password. Uh, you can also deregister the account if you ever sell the car. Uh, and switch country. This is very important because as you can imagine, the different servers also mean um, some logins are tied to some specific servers and certain logins. So just be very mindful that this is actually a very important step to get the countries right. Oh, so to mention as well, assuming two persons have the app, like myself and my wife, only one person can log in at, the, at one point in time. So you can't have two apps active. So if I log in, she gets logged out and likewise, likewise she logs in, you know, I get logged out. So let's go to settings. Settings is pretty straightforward. It's just like, hey, you know, what kind of messages you want to receive. So for example, when it starts charging or when it ends charging or if a trunk is open, it sends you uh, like a push message. Um, so you can kind of check on and off what you actually want and what not. Um, vehicle positioning, uh, auto login. I like auto login because when I kind of click on the app, I don't actually need to log in again. As, as it is, it's a cumbersome one to kind of, you know, log in when you want to turn on air conditioning, which I thought they shouldn't have done it. But yeah, you can also change it to biometric if that's your preferred. Um, obviously, sound and client service option. 
This is really just talking about how you want to receive uh, correspondence from BYD. Nothing special there. And about us is really just terms and condition, privacy, comments, and new what the version number is. So I mentioned earlier, one of the key features that's significantly missing in this that I thought is a big miss for me, uh, BYD is the fact that the last app actually had the function called live chat. So the live chat actually connects you to customer service and then it's not a chatbot. It's actually a live person on the other side that can help you with issues. Um, for some reason, they've taken that away. Uh, funnily, I've actually used the live chat before uh, when I first got the car and I thought it was really, really helpful. Um, I hope they implement it back at some point. I can understand the challenges because they obviously open up many regions, but I, I kind of thought that was a miss for them.